God's the only one I know who can love you out of hatred, love you out of sickness, love you out of bad attitudes, and be there for you when you're not there for yourself. Oh, God, I feel it here. Listen, I'm telling you right now, I didn't tell you dress up like that. You better pin your hat on and pin your wig on to something today because I'm fixing to have some church up in here. It dominated, it dominated. The, 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 the word here is that his good pleasure is what moves him. His good pleasure is what drives him. It, it's desire on God's part to be dominated by his good pleasure. Now understand God. He has to allow his good pleasure to take preeminence in his actions towards his children. And the word here, good pleasure, is two words. And one means to be accounted. And, and, and the question here is, is, what does it seem like to you? Well, this word answers that question it is to be accounted or what it seems to be and so if I say what does it seem like it seems like in my experiences with God that God is dominated by good pleasure because I have been in situations where I should have been wiped out but what was it that moved God not to wipe me out his good pleasure. I have gone against him. I have ignored his warning. I have done things that the Bible spoke against. But God did not wipe me out because he was not dominated by his holiness. He was not dominated by his need for justice. He was dominated by his good pleasure. And the reason he's got me here is to show me how good he can be to me. So no matter how bad I am to myself, it only proves how good he is. I, I wish you'd understand it. Uh, God, I hope you get this if you get nothing today. Look somebody in the face and say, I don't care what you think. It had to be God. I'm trying to tell you, it had to be God. Look at somebody and say, I don't care what they're trying to do to you. They will not win because God's going to bring you out. Do I have some believers up in here? Oh, God. This, this thing, this thing. Uh, one writer said, one writer said that, that, that God's good pleasure is not an arbitrary whim. It is not something that he just decided to do suddenly. This is implanted in his eternal self. It changes my whole picture now of everything that I deal with because everything is a setup for God to show his good pleasure everything that pain you had last week that you thought would wipe you out it didn't did it I watched you recover I, I mean I looked at you one day and I said what's wrong with you and the next day I saw you and you acted like the day before did not exist between one day's pain and the next day came God God's good pleasure. He stepped in between and he said, I don't want you looking like this because I will not give my glory to another. The devil will not get any more glory out of your life. I need some glory. So he reversed the curse. represents his wisdom it represents his love and everything that he can contribute to the well-being and the blessing of his children 
<laughs> you have to see this in the context of Israel who totally disallowed the move of God. <laughs> they have the idols. They, they, they have replaced him. They, they have missed the point of his excellence. <laughs> he is so good yet so anonymous <laughs> because even though he's good to you, he does not declare it so you can hear it or see it. <laughs> Remember how he reveals himself. He makes promises <laughs> then he brings them to pass. <laughs> My God God, then he leaves it up to you to believe who it is that did it. I hope I didn't miss you there. You see, God is very misunderstood, but he leaves himself to be misunderstood. The reason is he doesn't drop it off physically and say, here I am, here it is. Somebody brought me a gift, and they didn't want the gift just placed with the rest of the gift. Because sometimes a name on a gift, if you can't identify the name on the gift, you have the gift, but you don't know who brought it. Uh, you know, because you don't know who the name is. There's many people, you know, you can't always remember. Now, 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 when a person brings you a gift and says, now open it now. I want you to open it right now while I'm here. Well, you know the gift, you see the person, you open it. You can't confuse who did it. Because you're looking at the, don't put my gifts with the rest. Open mine now so you can see this gift and who gave it. But God is not like that. God gives gifts, but God is an anonymous giver. He leaves it to your faith to know that it is God who did it. But we have a tendency to misappropriate the praise because oftentimes we give it to where it does not deserve to be given. If you notice in the text of Isaiah, God wants to bless Israel. But Israel has a proclivity to idols. I don't know who your idol is. And I don't know who you give an account to for what happens in your life. Because sometimes you think it's the person who brought it. But if you knew they didn't really want you to have it. But for some reason that they can't understand, they brought it. Then you would know who really did it. Some folks are your enemies. Do you know that your enemy can bless you? <laughs> uh, touch your neighbor and say, when your enemy blesses you, it had to be God. <laughs> Amen. When folk can't stand you and still do something for you, they're not the ones doing it. Oh, uh, uh, I missed you on that one. I'm, I'm talking to some spiritual folk here. Shake somebody's hand and say, I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> you know why I know they didn't like me then when they did it? Because they don't like me now. And God can use folks' wrong attitudes to bless his children. I'll tell you a little story while I'm here, and I, I got a little work to do, so I'll go on quickly. Some of the little boys were walking down the street one day, and they heard a woman pray. And she was crying out, God, 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 I don't have any food. Oh, Jesus, I need some bread, Lord, real bad. And the little boys were looking in through the window and heard her just moaning and groaning. And oh, Jesus, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. And they looked at each other and they began to laugh. And one little smart Alex said, let's go play a little trick on her. How much money you got? How much money you got? How much money you got? And the people said, I got money, money, I got money, money. All right, so they got some money together, ran down to the store and bought her a loaf of bread. And they were laughing coming back. They said, now, we're going to leave it right at the door. You knock on the door, leave it, and then watch her come out. And then, and then, then, then they stood outside, left the door, knocked on the door, ran over the bushes, and when she came out, and, bread, and she said, thank you, Jesus. They started laughing. Said, she thought that was God. 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 God will use any attitude to bless you. 
Folk think they trying to hurt you and they bless you. Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God. Uh, this one is on God. Touch your neighbor, say it had to be God. <laughs> Uh, I'm not a fool. It had to be God. Mm. <laughs> I want to be in his hands because the writer is convincing me that no matter what the circumstances is, it's his pleasure, it's his choice, his delight, it's his satisfaction, and it becomes his will. So then he is pointing out that God's purpose in coming into my life is to impart his blessings and anointing upon me. He comes into my life to energize me with his power. It's significant because this good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself, which means that no matter who is the conduit, God is the source. It means no matter who brings it to you, it didn't originate in them. It originated in the mind and the spirit and the person of God. Which means if he sends it with him and he won't bring it, somebody else will. If he sends it with her and she won't bring it, somebody else will. Because once God has set his mind to bless you, and set his mind to bring you to the next level. There is no devil in hell that can stop you from going there. I feel it here. Touch your friends, but touch somebody beside you and say, the only reason I don't have it is because it's not my time yet. Amen. It's not my time. That's, it's, it's, touch somebody else. It's just a matter of timing. That's all. If I can get through the rough spot, if I can hang through the drought, it's got to come because it's in his bosom to bless me. He wants to bless me. He's trying to bless me. In fact, he died to bless me. And can't no devil stop it. Shake somebody's hand like you're going to shake it off. And tell them you got to think it, believe it, hold on to it, receive it, claim it. feel God here. Mm. And so all this then is dictated. One writer said the delight, pleasure, and the satisfaction which God has in blessing the saints is found in the fact that what he does for them is dictated by what is good for them. So his good pleasure then, which he purposed in himself, and purpose here is to set before oneself, to determine in himself, and set it before himself. Can you see God with all power in his hand? Focusing to bless me. Now I understand how when the fella jumped on my back in the middle of that river now I understand why I didn't drown because God had purpose now I understand why you were shot six times and still got up out of a hospital bed now I understand when you shot yourself full of heroin and should have been gone on an OD, God stopped the thing from running to your heart and you got up out of there. Now I understand. When you're laid up in bed with somebody with AIDS who wouldn't tell you, but God stopped the disease from moving to your blood. Now I understand why when the doctor said you got three months to live, you buried him and you're still living. Now I understand why I'm not rocking in a rocking chair crazy because God had made up his mind. Though hell may bow the way, I'm going to bring him out and get the glory. I feel it in here. Somebody look up. I'm getting ready to be blessed. Touch your neighbor say, I'm getting ready to be blessed more than you can ever imagine. I feel... 
I feel it here. Why? This one is on God. I feel like shouting here. Touch your neighbor, say, my next car. It's on God. Touch somebody, say, my next house. It's on God. Touch somebody, say, my next, uh-huh. It's on God. <laughs> Y'all sit down. I got a little more to go. <laughs> and with, with the view to that in, in the dispensation of the fullness of time. <laughs> because it's locked up in him. His purpose is there. <laughs> but now I have to move through time. Move through my choices. Move through my weaknesses. Move through my failures. I have to move through it to get to the timing of God. Because that in the dispensation of the fullness of time. If you notice, it's eighth with a view to. That's so, so the direction now is what the purpose took. The purpose is shrouded in time. Because God is not a creature of time, but he meets me in time. Because I'm a creature of time. Oh, God, man, I feel this thing. God's got the thing set. But I've got to get to it. Because remember now, the Bible's over there. That, that Yes, yes, yes. But he calls the end from the beginning. Not his beginning, because he has none. Not his his end because he has none. He's talking about my beginning and my ending because he is an eternal God and in eternity there's no beginning and there's no ending. So there has to be a fullness of time for me. So God's purpose has timing. The thing he's got to do is give me a word to hold me before my time because when my my time comes he don't have to give me a word it's my time the thing is can I stay together until it delivers oh, can I preach like I feel it when, when, can I, I want to I want you to go with me when I know mine is coming I can walk up in anybody's house and say you know that's tough man you live in large ain't no jealousy Ain't no envy, because mine is coming. I feel it here. Amen. I can go to your wedding and have a ball at your wedding, because I know mine is coming. I ain't got to fight over no woman, or you ain't got to fight over no man, because you know yours So now what I want God to help me to do is to keep myself together until my time comes. I don't want to blow my brains out and drive around looking sad and unhappy and fussing all the time. But when I believe God, I can praise him for what's coming. Oh yes, oh yes. I ain't got a dime in my pocket. But why are you so happy? Because it's coming. Ain't no sense and wait until it get here. Uh, touch somebody said this one's on God. Uh, touch somebody else said my new house is on God. Uh, this contract is on God. Uh, he's working it out right now. Uh, so all he want me to do is hold myself to Woo, I feel it in here. I feel like having church in here. Shake somebody's hand like you go shake it off. And tell them, hold yourself together. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. As sure as God is in heaven, it's coming, it's coming. I feel it in here. I'll preach the rest of it later. Give somebody a high five. Say, it's on God. It's on God. Because there's a Kronos. And there's a Kairos. The 
chronos is the passing of time but in the chronos is the season can I preach this thing like I want and I'll get the rest of it another time but understand this about God he does not want you confused when he brings it to pass and the longer you wait for something is the longer your resources are dried up I noticed something when Jackie was preaching and that's a bad woman when I listened to Jackie she brought a point to my mind I never thought if you check the Bible from Samuel check John the Baptist and check all of the fellows who came along Samson John I noted it in my book all of the mothers were barren are y'all listening to me and all of them had to wait a long time that's why I know when Jackie Jackie didn't say it but it came out of what she was saying I said ain't this some it looks like everybody that God wants to use has got to come out of a situation where it's got to be proven that it's God that's doing it so you have to wait while she was preaching I was wondering I said, Lord, how could it be that the mamas and the papas had to suffer because God's got an offspring that's going to do something. And what God said is, I want you to know that when the offspring comes, it ain't your baby. It's my baby because you couldn't produce it. So I produced it. Shake somebody's hand. Said, I've been impregnated with this idea for so long that it ain't my baby it's God's baby I feel like preaching I've been waiting on this house that I can't buy myself so it ain't my house it's God's house touch your neighbor said the next contract you sign is not gonna be yours it's gonna be God's contract why the money's too big for you to work it out it had to be God shout hallelujah I feel like closing now touch your neighbor say neighbor this house had to be God oh 15,000 square foot uh, had to be God uh, this woman had to be God I can see you on a honeymoon now laid back on the sand with whatever you're drinking in your hand leaning back with a fine fox but instead of praising her I can see you look in her eyes and say had to be God I can see you with a man tall dark and handsome or short and hand no matter but when you look at him instead of bragging about the man you'll be so happy you look up to heaven and say got to be God my car got to be God my mind got to be God shake somebody's hand say I need about 20 it had to be God my children had to be God my mind had to be God my peace had to be God my church had to be God my joy had to be God my life had to be God Touch three people, tell them it's getting ready to break loose. Tell somebody my blessings, getting ready to break loose. It had to be God, it's getting ready. Don't wait till the battle's over. <laughs> I don't know how you feel. I don't know how you feel. But it had to be God. That's what I want in my life. Had to be God. 
I will not give my name to another. You're going to walk out that hospital room and say it had to be gone. You're going to walk out of a situation that's got you in bondage right now. And when you release it, it had to be. Had to be gone. You're going to look at your financial statement after having struggled for five years. Folk going to call you and open doors. And then you're going to tell the truth. It had to be God. You know it's God when you can have something right in front of you and instead of indulging you said just hold on I got to praise God 